There were so many moments while playing the Riftbreaker where I stood at the precipice of annihilation, my resources dwindling, my base relatively undefended, as I scrambled to put out fires and tens of thousands of aggressive aliens marched in my direction. Whether I was constructing my base, upgrading my mech, or battling hordes of enemies, this RTS top-down shooter hybrid always had me at the edge of my seat. Even with several unfortunate bugs and a bland story, surviving by the skin of my teeth through a combo of meticulous time management and split-second decisions made it all worthwhile. Sent to colonize the uncharted planet of Galatea 37, your job is to establish a base of operations, survive the incredibly hostile local life, and open a portal back to Earth before you get eaten by several thousand monsters. Like this. The story is dull and forgettable, mostly used as an excuse to give you increasingly challenging objectives. The writing and voice acting, in particular, are often laughable. And the main character, Ashley, well, she's about as interesting as a sheet of drywall. The gravity in this place is acting weird. Something must be causing this. Thankfully, the Riftbreaker succeeds in so many other ways that I found it pretty easy to ignore the awful banter. It's incredibly ambitious, mixing together the best components of a dozen genres to create something multifaceted and memorable. It's got base building and tower defense components, survival elements like resource gathering, an RPG-like crafting and gear system, and top-down bullet hell combat with loot drops. One moment you're spending resources to build a power plant to power your ammo factories like in an RTS, and the next you're running around shooting and dodging hundreds of enemy attacks. You also have to find and set up mining operations on resource deposits and build defensive towers to automate some of the responsibilities of protecting your bases from incoming attacks. That hodgepodge of mechanics actually comes together really well. It can certainly get a little overwhelming at times, but the excellently crafted campaign tutorializes you in small bites, so you don't break down and cry. At least, not right away. It continually pushes you to learn new mechanics while you're thrown up against increasingly hostile creatures and environments. For example, one biome is so hot that building any structures is impossible until you master cryo-cooling technology, while another has explosive mines hidden underfoot throughout the entire level, which makes exploration incredibly dangerous. Warning. Unfortunately, one of these areas is overly ambitious with its enemy design and ends up being relatively broken. The poisonous swamp, which features a deadly plant that slowly takes over the whole map, seems to be too much for even my high-end PC or the current-gen consoles to handle. Visiting it causes tons of crashes and even makes it impossible to save your progress until you complete your objective and teleport back to a different biome. As you explore different biomes and establish bases in each of them, the building and resource management becomes exponentially more complex as well. You'll eventually need to jump between biomes and bases to manage each of their resources, improve their buildings, and confront waves of enemies and environmental catastrophes between each of them. This proliferation of base and resource management can be extremely rewarding, but it's also intensely stressful. My final hours with the campaign had me standing up and sweating profusely as I juggled about 18 different projects with not enough time to accomplish all of them. Not to mention the imminent armies approaching my location from multiple fronts. It's the ultimate test of preparation and time management, and it's absolutely not for the faint of heart. But when I finally emerged victorious, I felt a rush of accomplishment and satisfaction that's hard to come by. And when the base building and resource gathering elements become too much of a headache, there are massive armies of enemies to take on in some excellent bullet hell action that puts your skills and gear to the test instead. You'll run into the occasional horde as you explore and settle new areas, but the real challenge finds you when armies amass and lay waste to your defenses in the hopes of putting an end to your attempts at colonizing this hellscape. While you're able to build defenses, you'll only ever take direct control of your mech. Defensive barriers and turrets can deal with smaller groups of enemies attacking your base, but involving yourself directly is absolutely necessary to survive large-scale skirmishes. There's a wide variety of weapons you can equip, each with their own advantages, disadvantages, and resource costs. 
The flamethrower is great at taking out swarms of weaker enemies at close range, while the railgun does massive damage at long range. Each weapon can also be modified with different effects or bonuses, and can be complemented with equipable skills and movement abilities that transform you into a one-woman army. Unfortunately, during the second half of the campaign when your mechs, turrets, and enemy armies are at their highest density, large-scale battles left my poor frame rate in absolute tatters. These choppy moments aren't the only issues either, as I encountered a fair amount of bugs and performance problems throughout my 50-hour completionist playthrough. In areas where you approach the maximum build limit, for example, the Rift Breaker begins to crash with relative regularity, causing a frustrating loss of progress. Most issues aren't especially experience ruining, aside from the bugged swamp area I mentioned earlier, but they definitely add an annoyance to an already difficult campaign. The Rift Breaker is a fantastic blend of real-time strategy and bullet hell combat that provides an intense challenge and an addictive RPG loop. Its stories and characters are aggressively forgettable, and its numerous bugs leave it feeling a bit unpolished. But it succeeds at so much during its 50-hour campaign that I'll remember it for a long time to come. That is, once I recover from the various panic attacks it induced. For more tense action, check out our reviews of Back for Blood or Metroid Dread. And for everything else, keep it right here on IGN.